Okay, one of my favorite things about Star Wars, and I think everyone loves it, is the droids. And what's really, really cool about Celebration is that the entire droid building community, which is huge, comes out to show off all of the things that they've created. We're talking about fans that build amazing things that look like this. And now we're gonna go talk to a few, we're gonna check out as many droids as we can, and we're basically just gonna have a great time with Astromex and Protocol Droids and any droid we can get near. Hey, so we are lucky enough to not only be at Celebration, but be talking to people from the R2 Builders Club. This is my new friend, Gene. Gene, where do you start on a project like this? Well, what you want to do is basically go to our websites, astromech.net. We actually have the plans. We have everything that you need to basically make one of these guys. Uh, it does take a little time, but research, do your research. When I started this one, I spent about three months before I even decided what I'm going to do with it what I'm going to put into it and then go from there, then you can actually start to build. You can actually take the blueprints, it's a one-to-one -one scale, make it yourself or what our club does offer is called parts runs and they can actually offer a particular part for that uh, droid. Okay, so question number two, how technically skilled do you have to be to undertake a project like this? If you're a little bit mechanically inclined, basically. Um, if you I, could fix a bike, could you build an astronaut? Yes, you can, I think you sure can. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. How long did this one take you? This one took me about two and a half years. How much of that was polishing it to a high shine? That took us about <laughs> uh, a bit too much for that. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this has been Gene, his gorgeous R2 unit. This is the R2 Builders Club. So we are here with Bob. Bob, will you introduce yourself? I'm Bob from uh, actually the Seattle area, and this is R2-D2. You might not need to be introduced to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a couple of quick questions. One, what inspired you to jump into R2 building? Because it's a commitment. It's a, yeah. Uh, I guess probably when I first saw the movie, I saw R2 go across that hallway and said, someday I want to build him. I'm getting really old, so I figured I'd better do it now uh, <laughs> while I still could. He's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. How long did it take you to put it together? I spent about six years um, building this one. It's been operational about five years. What would you rate the level of expertise in mechanics that you would need to put together an R2 unit? You don't, you know. What you are able to do when you're done, as opposed to what, when you started, are two different things. You just learn along the way. I, I'm not an engineer, but I learned a lot of things. So, we've seen a lot of astromech droids at the show, but for a lot of people, one of the coolest pieces of technology in Star Wars are these guys, the mouse droids. And this is Thomas, and it's his baby. So, will you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, well, it's made from ABS uh, plastic. It's also made with a little bit of Sentra as well. You can see that a lot of Bondo work and stuff was done on the outside, it's nice and smooth. But we just glued it all up together, just some uh, hot glue on the inside to just help stabilize it. Nice high speakers on the inside. I'm running it using lithium polymer battery packs. We also have an Arduino Uno that goes to an MP3 board by Wi-Fi and I can control the sounds for the whole droid from my phone. This is an amplifier, a 10 by 10 watt amplifier. Uh, just battery pack here to run the Arduino. We'll be running a Spectrum system it's great stuff because we don't have to deal with uh, hurting other people's droids. Okay, we got ourselves a brushless motor system that's censored, so the action on it is extremely smooth. Again, running by lithium polymer battery packs, digital servo, that's the motor there. And we've done a ch uh, custom ch chain drive using parts that we had left over from the laser cut parts. So cool. So at what point did you decide that in the world of all of these other droids, the mouse droid was the one for you? Uh, well, I am 
actually working on my own R2, but this was a good start. Just trying to figure out you know, what materials I like to work with, kind of figure out my style. Perfect. How long did this take you to build? Because there's a lot going on and you've got it very elegantly laid out in the chassis. <laughs> uh, we've been working on this guy here now for the better part of two years. You know, changes in life and everything. Yeah. So it just kind of held back. Thank you so much for taking time to share this amazing creation with us. Mm -hmm. We love it. It's ready to hit the Death Star and run the hallways. That's it. All right. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Thomas. Take care. It's a pleasure you chatting. You have a great show. So, who's your favorite Star Wars character? If you could live on any planet or location in the Star Wars universe, what would it be? If you could have one piece of Star Wars technology alive in your world, what would it be? Okay, you get force powers right now. What's the first thing you do? All right, the big one. What makes Star Wars special for you?